One of the most common questions surrounding the Nicola Bully case is the following. Did Nicola enter the water on January the 27th, the day of her disappearance? In this video, I'll be taking a look at the extensive search operation, and in particular the use of a cadaver dog in the river wire. Firstly, let's take a look at the following short clip. Let's go live now to Lancashire, where GB News' reporter Will Hollis is there for us. Will, what's the very latest? Yes, well, uh, the last update that we had from Lancashire Police was that they found that key witness, a man who was described as being tall with a white fluffy dog and walking in the area at around the time when Nicola was last seen. We haven't had any sort of update on top of that, so we don't know the content of those conversations, but police say that he was speaking to the police. Um, what we do know, though, today, Patrick, is that the same things have been happening today that have been happening ever since Nicola went missing on Friday. We've seen boats going up and down the River Wire. Uh, we've seen different types of dogs. One that was described to me as a, a cadaver dog uh, in a boat going along the River Wire, and it was clearly smelling for, for, for something, whatever it does. Uh, it was clearly doing a job there on the River Wire in, in the, uh, the look, the search for, for Nicola. It's not just the police and their partner organisations. Here where I am at the tennis club is where local people have been coming together uh, and they've been walking on different routes around the River Wire. And uh, that's because, as I heard from some of Nicola's closest friends, that they can't give up hope and because there are, of course, two little girls at home that want their mummy home. Nicky is just a lovely human being inside and out. Um, living a normal life, dropping the children off at school, going on a daily walk things planned, going out the weekend, seeing friends and family. Yeah, you just can't make sense that this is actually happening and we're, when we're here we are. And I suppose knowing Nikki and what type of person she is, a, a mum and a partner, this is out of character? Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah, she, yeah. Nikki, as you said, we're a rural village, we're just, we're just normal people, simple lives, yeah, it's completely out of character, yeah. And then just um, on the point about the family, how is the family coping at this point? You're quite close to the family. Yeah, absolutely. We've got children at the same school and, and that's, that's how the relationship began. You imagine yourselves, Paul's got an immense job of looking after his family, supporting the girls, yet yeah, imagine the roller coaster he's going on living this, as he says, perpetual nightmare. Um, so you can put yourselves in those shoes and think the roller coaster they are, are going on. And we've got to be here again as a community to support that and that's why we, we are out here in conditions like this, just trying to find any clues we can. We are just trying to hold on to the hope. That's what's keeping us going. Um, knowing that her two little girls are at home missing mummy and knowing that mummy is missing is what's driving us forward. We know that knowing Nikki, her family are everything um, and we know without a doubt that if she could be at home with them, that's where she'd be. Just as a very quick recap, uh, Nicola went missing last Friday. Her mobile phone was found on a bench. Her spaniel dog was found nearby, but Nicola is still missing nearly a week on, and police say they are still extremely concerned as to where Nicola might have gone. And the message is very much that if you're passing the area of uh, uh, St. Michael's at around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock last Friday, if you do have any sort of camera on your car, or if you're a home nearby that might have any sort of CCTV, they really do want to hear from you. OK, so the main point of focus during that news piece there is the discussion regarding a cadaver dog, the usage or utilisation of a cadaver dog during the search for Nicola Bully. Now, we're talking about four or five days into the search for Nicola at this point in time, and many people have seen these photographs of the dog on the boat going up and down, searching the river wire. But today I did some research on the capability of cadaver dogs and searching in water and the results and information that I found is actually incredibly surprising. The following is an article from the University of Huddersfield dated September the 11th 2015 and it states the following. Research shows value of cadaver dogs locating underwater corpses. Even when a body is submerged in deep and murky water, a specially trained dog can sniff its whereabouts from the surface. This incredible level of canine capability is being investigated by University of Huddersfield researcher Lorna Irish. 
Her work on cadaver detection dogs will make a powerful case for extending their use in cases of underwater corpses. During her research for a PhD, Lorna has covered several aspects of the work of detection dogs and has also developed a special fascination for the use of dogs to detect submerged bodies. Globally, there are some 100,000 deaths annually from drowning, including accidents and suicides. Some countries, such as the USA, are ahead of the UK in using dogs to detect the submerged bodies. When a body is on land, it is hoped it will stay in one place. But in water, a body can move in three dimensions, so it is a lot more difficult to locate and recover, said Lorna. It is absolutely fascinating watching the dogs work, she said. I have seen dogs locate bodies within a metre, and they have been quite accurate in depths of about 15 metres of water. Lorna's research has found that the dogs can only be really effective if they can get down to the level water to clarify the scent or they may not be able to give a clear indication. Therefore, access to the water both from the bank and particularly from a boat is crucial to success of a search. If the sides of the boat are too high, the dog will simply not be able to smell the water, says Lorna. There is also evidence that tasting the water is important for the dogs as well. According to the handlers, many of their dogs taste the water, says Lorna, and we think that this is a confirmation mechanism used by the dogs to confirm the presence of a body. OK, so what intrigues me about that particular article is where Lorna states there that she has witnessed with her own eyes these dogs being able to recover bodies or find bodies or alert to bodies at depths of up to 15 metres. Not 15 feet, 15 metres. Now, it was reported that the depth at around the area where Nicola Bully's belongings were found, it does go possibly down to a depth of around 13 feet. Not 13 metres, 13 feet, but 15 metres is 49 feet. So this Lorna has witnessed a cadaver dog find human remains or find a body at a depth of 49 feet in deep, murky waters. Yet Nicola Bully's body is not found. How do we explain that? It's another one of these indicators, isn't it, that something could be not as it seems with this case. And I have to be honest and just say it as it is. I mean, this cadaver dog was there for quite a length of time, up and down the river. Why it wasn't just stuck in one place? They took this dog um, a fair way up and down the river wire during their search for Nicola, and yet not once did that dog alert to a body under the water. Now, the only way that I can explain this, and this is just a pure assumption on my part here, but maybe the water was that cold that it slowed down the decomposition process. Is that possible? Is that a possibility? I'm not an expert in terms of body decomposition, but I have heard that if a water is of such a low temperature, it can slow that process down. Could that be why a dog has not alerted to the presence of a body under the water? But I mean... It's almost like I'm trying to make, I won't say excuses, but I'm trying to find reasons. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to find reasons why a dog would not alert to a body. I mean, it's not as if this body was found 5, 10, 15, 20 miles away. It was located around a mile away from the bench area. And not only that, but the psychic guy who found her said that the body was actually floating down the middle of the river about a quarter of a mile before that. So take that mile and move even further, or closer I should say, sorry, closer to the bench, that is where the body was first seen. And yet this dog is going up and down the river wire countless, countless occasions. On the river bank as well, I've seen pictures of this dog, you know, searching along the river banks. Nothing. No alert whatsoever. And as I say, for me personally, the most intriguing part of that piece written by Huddersfield University is where Lorna stated the following. It is absolutely fascinating watching the dogs work. I have seen dogs locate bodies within a metre, and they have been quite accurate in depths of about 15 metres of water. So depths of 15 metres, 49 feet, and by all accounts, as I stated earlier, 
one of the deeper parts of the river wire close to where Nicola Bully's belongings were found, is around 13 feet. These dogs have the outstanding capability of tracking or locating bodies as deep as 49 feet deep. So make of that what you will. Can we explain it by the climate, the water temperature? Has that got some say here in terms of why the dog did not alert to the presence of Nicola Bully's body or are we looking at something else here?